Hello and welcome to season two, episode one of the Knit One Dick podcast. My name is Sam and you can find me on Ravelry as Stealth Dragon and on Instagram as Knit Run Dig. Those are the two main ways that I put photos and stuff of what I'm doing um, at the moment. So that's the best way to find out what I've been up to. And um, this is season two. It's been a few years, two or three years at least since I recorded. So I've decided to just start from... Um, and decided to call this season two. I haven't been doing a lot of knitting um, in the time since I've recorded. I have done some, but one of the reasons is I have two new four-pawed members of the house, a cat and a dog, both of whom are destructo animals, particularly the dog, especially when he was a puppy. I couldn't leave knitting in the same room as him because he would eat it. So even finished objects have had been um, demolished by him. And even now I have to remember not to leave knitting in the ki- in the kitchen, which is where he lives, without me being there. And sometimes even if I am there, he will steal it at, with great glee and prance away like he's a dressage horse and with a thing in his mouth and I'll get it out and chew it. Or I'll find um, even fibre, actually, when I was spinning out in the garden. That was a nightmare because he went into the box with the fibre in and stole that and licks it and it just gets all disgusting. So that's one of the problems. It's a bit better now. Um, and the cat, um, she just likes to sit on my lap and eat what I'm knitting. But hopefully now they've both grown up a bit, she says, hopefully things should be easier um, or less destructive unless I catch it on something, which is quite likely because I'm quite clumsy on the knitting front. So um, this podcast will be similar in format to the previous one. I'm going to try and keep them sort of about 20 minutes long and do them on on a weekly basis. And I'll be talking about the projects I've been working on. So the, the, they'll mainly be knitting and spinning, but there'll also be some crochet in there. And I may also um, talk about some sewing that I've been doing. And I will also include something about um, an archaeological, something of archaeological or historical interest. Um, and I'm also going to include more on textiles. So that um, not this week, but... I will be adding more on textiles in future episodes. And then I'll also have um, shop updates at the end of this of the podcast when I have them. And um, you can find, I make bags and I dye fibre, and you can find those on knitrundig.etsy.com. Though I will have some news on that at some point in the near future. And I'll probably also have at the end of the regular section a random bit where I just talk about something that I like or something that sparked my interest Um Provided I haven't already talked about it in the main body of the podcast, I am quite random anyway. So we shall see how that goes. I don't have any notes, and this is the second time I've tried to record this. I recorded this yesterday with a microphone, but the microphone didn't work, and all I got was a horrible buzzing sound. So I'm trying this with a separate vocal track on GarageBand. We shall see if it works or not. So anyway, that's enough of the preamble. Let's get started with what I've been working on. I'll start by showing you my finished project and it took me three years, well more than three years. I started it in May 2016 and finished it um, last month, November 2019. Oh by the way, it is Tuesday the 4th of December 2019, just to let you know. And I won't, there's no way I can show you all of this but here's a quick glimpse. And I don't know if you can see but there is a sort of dark and light patterning to it. And I'm going to in- insert a picture of the finished object right here so that you can see see it all in all its glory. And the pattern is the Sunny Log Cabin Blanket by Lucy from Attic24. And it she has a podcast called Attic24. So you search for that on the internet, you can find that she has lots of fantastic free crochet patterns. And you can also buy um, yarn packs from woolwarehouse.com, which is for example, this one, and she has different colorways for the same projects or different projects. And with path, um, a lot of them have project patterns that are on her blog, or some of them might have patterns included. But I recommend her website, it's got lovely patterns, but also lovely photos of the area where she lives and places she visits. And the yarn I used on this was Stylecraft DK that's 100% acrylic. I there were 16 different colors in it. I will put a link into um, Lucy's blog page uh, so you'll see what colours I used. I still have some left, but not necessarily that much. Um, there are 16 squares, and so um, you crochet the start with doing a granny square, this sort of granny square type of thing, 
and then you build on like a, uh, as in a log cabin and then you sew all of the squares together and then do um, a border. So it did take me three years but I'm really pleased I finished it. Um, I think the motivation I had for actually finishing it was because it was getting colder and I wanted something to wrap myself up in. I know it doesn't match the wallpaper but it's bright and it makes me happy and the as far as I can see, that's that's the, the best outcome for me. So that's the Sunny Log Cabin Blanket by Lucy from Attic24. And I apologise for the crackling of the static. We've got the heating on and so everything's drying out and causing lots of static. And it is 100% acrylic. And I did put it in the dryer. So I used a 4mm crochet hook. I do not know what the US size of that is. So that's the only finished object I've got to show you this month this week. Um, so let's move on to the other projects I've got in progress. I've got one spinning one which I'll show after this but I've got three knitting projects. The first one is a pair of socks. I've completed the first socks. Let's just see. I don't know if you can see it's got um, an unusual heel. It's called the CPCTC pattern and it's by Sarah Jordan who's PA Knitwit and to Knitwit Designs. It's a paid for pattern on Ravelry and it's a toe up pattern. And um, I found that this really fits my heel. I've got um, quite a broad foot and a narrow heel. So traditional afterthought heels really just don't fit for me. They're too, um, they don't necessarily have enough space across the front of the foot and they're too big at the back of the heel. So um, it's, it's not a great combination for me. But um, as you can see, that's the bottom, the sole of the sock. You do increases on the sole and then you do a heel turn to make the sock and it's a fun pattern to do um, you're doing left and right lifted increases which are very straightforward to do um, I do when I start each sock I still have to look at the pattern just to remind me how to do those things but I'm sure it won't take me long to memorize it for the next pair of socks and uh, so that's the first sock and here's the second one I'm just I'm on the heel turn so I've done the the um, sole increases on that too so Hopefully next week there'll be a finished pair of Christmas socks for me. And the yarn I'm using is Dragon Hill Studios, um, Sherborne Sparkle 4-ply. So that's, um, I think it's a Merino Nylon Stellina blend. And the colourway is O Tannenbaum. And the yarn comes pre-wound in these cakes, which is fantastic. And um, they attend lots of shows and they have um, an Etsy shop as well. So I'll put links in to their website and I'm using 2.25 um, US size one needles and I'm doing 72 stitches because I'm quite um, a tight knitter and these were the only needles I had available at the time and I was desperate to cast them on. I was so desperate in fact I cast them on in July not this year but in 2018 and I'm only just coming to finish them now so you have these moments of what you call so, and I always had these urges to start something on straight away and then I, it just languishes as my attention gets drawn elsewhere. So hopefully these will be done soon. And I've got another project. I'm just going to bend down to touch it because it's fallen on the floor, which is a pair of mittens. I also started these two years ago in September. And they are the Lundy, L-U-N-D-E-Y, mittens by K.M. Bedigan, who is a fire, A-P-H-I-A, on Ravelry and here's the first one there's an afterthought thumb afterthought thumb which I haven't done yet and you can see it's puffins my absolute favorite bird so of course I have to knit them and I you I need to put the thumb in but there's also some Swiss darning or um, I've forgotten what you call it doesn't matter anyway I'm sewing putting some colored details in on one of the puffins after I finished as well and I started the second one and whilst I was knitting these I got fed up of doing them on a, on a circular needle doing the magic loop so I thought oh I'll use DPNs but the problem with the DPNs is they do fall out a lot but I also it appears that my gauge is uh, I don't know if you can see so the problem is that my gauge is a little bit looser but I'm sure once they're on my hands I won't mind and of course there's always that oh I'll, if I, it'll block it everything will come out magically right which of course it won't but um, this one fits over my hand even without the thumb so I shouldn't have any problems with them and I'm using Jameson and Smith Shetland Spindrift in 
various colours. So I've got a black, um, a red, a burnt orange and a white. And I'll put links to the pattern and everything in the show notes. So that's the second knitting project. And then the third one is a sweater. And it's a Soldotna crop. I'm not going to do this as a crop sweater because I I don't I prefer to wear long longer sweaters. And I've i I've done the I've started the colour work and let's just see, there you go. I'm very much enjoying it so far. I have to admit I haven't knitted didn't do a tension swatch, so I'm going to try it on soon to make sure it goes over my head and look that it looks like it will fit me. I really like the fabric that I've got. So hopefully um, it'll fit and I'll keep checking and I can always increase a bit if I need to. She says, we shall see how that goes. I'll probably be famous last words. So I'm knitting this on 375 millimeter needles and I'm going to have to increase the um, length of the cord soon because, sorry, I don't know, I'm having to re-thread some of the stitches back on. Now I'll show you the colours I'm using. Three of the colours are Fibre Space Vivacious DK. And the first one is this lovely brown. It's called Verdigris. And then the pale green is Sea Glass. And then the bright green is Sea Green. And then the contrast colour I'm using to make it an extra bit of brightness is Madeleine Tosh DK. It's um, it's not a singles one. I haven't got the label, so I'm I don't think I've got the label, so I can't tell you the exact name of it. In the colourway Maple Leaf, and the reason I chose these is because they've all got a bit of each other in them. So um, I hopefully they will work together really well, and I'll be pleased with the result. So that's a Soldotna crop, Soldotna crop by Caitlin Hunter, who's Boyland Knitworks. That's the works in progress. I've got lots of things on the needles, some of which I don't even know what they are because I haven't looked at them for years, but it'll be fun. I think I'm going to dig those out quite soon and um, to do various episodes on the different types of um, unfinished objects that I have lo lo loitering in my craft room. So that's, as I say, that's the knitting in progress and I have some spinning to show you too, um, which is buried underneath everything. So I'm spinning for the magpie top, another crop top, which I won't make cropped. Um, and this is some Shamu Makes Blue Face Lester in these beautiful mint green and purples. And um, I'm hoping to aim, aiming for a four ply weight. And I'm very pleased with how it's spinning and, and how fine I'm able to get it. And I spun it, um, for me to get it fine I have to split the braid into um, thin strips like this um, because I, I have attempted to spin across the top, it's probably because I'm too impatient, which is where you get the whole width of the braid and just spin from that without dividing it, but I just find that I I get these big lumps and the colours I mean it does affect the way the colour is for me because I tend to just spin from one side and I get a lot left and it just doesn't feel as smooth or as flowy, I suppose is the way to say it. I don't feel the flow of the fibre anywhere nearly as much as if I split it, split it up. But that's just a personal preference. And that's going to be two-ply. There will be two-ply. I've got some other um, colours lined up. Of course, the one thing that you probably... I don't know how well you can see it, but I've had my hair dyed this sort of reddish colour, so it's really not going to go with the purple and the green. But um, who, we shall see um, how it goes, and who knows what colour my hair will be by then anyway. Um, I'm planning to have this finished in April, by April, to go to Wonderwood in Wales, which is actually my favourite fibre show in the UK, and um, I'm really looking forward to it. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. I have got something in the pipeline, but um, which is the Self Care Cowl by Louise Tilbrook, and it's a bulky weight cowl with a lovely cable detail on it and I'm going to use some hand spun for that which I thought I got with me but I haven't so if I finish the socks 
this week, then that's what I shall start on for next week. And um, if I enjoy it, I think I'm going to make a few of those for some Christmas presents for some of my friends and things. So if you're watching, ha, surprise. So that's all of the knitting and spinning and crochet content. Now let's talk about um, something historical. I'm going to talk about Farnham Castle, which is quite close to here. It's um, free to look around. And I went last month on a very beautiful, cold, but very beautiful day and was able to get some nice photos. The castle itself um, was first built in 1135 by Henri de Blois, who is William I, William the Conqueror's grandson. And he was also Bishop of Winchester. And for 800 years after that, Bishops of Winchester used the castle as one of their residences. Um, however, in 1927, there was a new Diocese of Guildford made. So the Bishop of Winchester no longer was responsible for Farnham. That went to Guildford, and so the Bishop no longer lives there. Um, since it was built, there have been many other phases of building. And if you walk around it, you'll see it's very much a traditional Mott and Bailey. So it's got this huge big mound um, a defensive mound with a keep on top and then you've got walls around it I think they're called curtain walls and then you'd have had buildings within and the within and that's a bailey and then there's a big ditch as well for defensive purposes and um, in so the first keep was pulled down and then rebuilt and then um, over time lots of changes were made which you can see from the brickworks and hopefully you'll be able to see from the photos I've shown you and then in more recent history, in World War II, it was used as a development centre for camouflage um, by the Ministry of Defence. And so important um, war work went on there. And then um, now, you, as I said, it's free to walk around, but it's also used as a wedding venue. And you can actually have on a Wednesday, I believe it is, tours of the Bishop's Palace, which you have to pay for. And it, it's best to book those. But I'm sure it's well worth a visit and I shall be going there sometime soon. So if you're in Farnham for Unravel in February and should it be a nice day, um, it'll probably be cold but it might be sunny, it's definitely worth a wander up there if you've got time. There's free parking nearby. That was free parking actually at the castle as well. And if you walk down into Farnham, there's loads of lovely coffee shops. So well worth a visit if you're passing through. So that's my local or my sort of history thing for this week. Next week, I think I'll try and talk about something about textiles. Let's see how that goes. And so that's all of the regular part of the podcast. So now on to shop news. So if, you, um, if, this, if you're not interested in the shop, that's absolutely fine. Thank you very much for watching this far. I look forward to hearing from you. Um, I'm planning to have some knit-alongs. I'll probably start those in the new year. So, that's, so now, um, thank you, as I said, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great week. See you next week, and I look forward to any comments that you might have, and seeing your chatter in the Knit Run Dig podcast group on Ravelry, which I shall bring back to life this week. So thanks very much for watching. Shop news. As I mentioned, I have also started dyeing fibre, and I've also got some blended fibre, which will go up in, in onto the shop in due course. But I will just show you some of the bags that I've got available in the shop at the moment. So I have, the first one I'm going to show you is it's turquoise flowers and it's a medium wedge bag so it's good for a big shawl project or um, for example a four ply fingering weight sweater project. So that's, that's the bag and then inside it's got turquoise polka dots. And then the next bag is a seasonal one and it's stags and thistles and these dots here let's just see if it'll focus it's supposed to be on servo autofocus but I don't think it is there we go they are metallic and there's also metallic elements on the lining which is this lovely warm check in reds and this is a small drawstring bag great right, for sock or small shawl projects and I've got a few of those and one medium drawstring bag available and then I love this fabric and I couldn't decide what bag to make so I made a variety of them I've got um, this I've called warmly wrapped up owls foxes 
and hedgehogs but I've also noticed there are grey squirrels on here too with their lovely knitted hats and scarves and there's blowing leaves and fronds and all sorts of things and I really like it. Let's just see. And this has an orange lining. And I've got this in small drawstring, small wedge and large drawstring bags. And then I've also um, started listing things I've called one of a kind. That means that I, I only have a limited amount of the fabric and I can't get any more. And one such is this Hyger, I think that's how you pronounce it, H-Y-G-G-E Christmas bag. And you've got your Santa gnome and you've got trees and snowflakes and warm drinks and oh, delicious. Um, and it makes me really happy and you've got stockings on there. And then on the inside, you've got um, a Scandinavian inspired print. So I have a few more bags in the shop. Um, please feel free to take a look. And I'm going to have some news about a club, which I'll start in the new year as well. And other shop news. Um, I'll be showing you some of the dyed fibres next week. So that's it for this week. Thank you very much for watching. Um, if you're back from, from the hiatus, a very long hiatus, thank you so much. And I'd like to say thank you to anyone new who's trying me, trying out this YouTube channel. I will put links um, to the things I've mentioned on my YouTube page, but also in Ravelry. So thank you very much again. Have a great week and I look forward to seeing you then. Ah, it's a hungry, hungry dog in the background. Thanks. Bye.